1956 brought an increase in living standards and more attention was focused on education. By this year, one in three high school graduates was now going off to college. This was also a huge year for music, with television being a springboard for many popular acts. TV shows like As the World Turns and The Price is Right were new to the airwaves, and this was also the year that disposable diapers became available to purchase. On January 9th, the very first Dear Abby advice column appeared in the San Francisco Chronicle. It was written by Pauline Phillips under her pen name Abigail Van Buren. Dear Abby was syndicated within weeks, becoming the most widely syndicated column in the United States. January 14th was the date on which Little Richard made his official debut on the American Pop Singles Chart with the brilliant hit Tutti Frutti. The song entered the Billboard's Top 100 list at number 58 and would be covered by other musicians that year like Pat Boone and Elvis Presley. Speaking of Elvis Presley, on February 22nd, he officially entered the U.S. music charts for the first time with Heartbreak Hotel. 1956 was the year that made Elvis. He had other hits that year with Blue Suede Shoes and Hound Dog, and he also appeared on countless television programs, including the infamous Ed Sullivan Show, in which it was rumored that he would only be filmed from the waist up. On May 22nd, the Peacock logo first debuted on NBC. John Graham and Herb Lubelin designed the new symbol for the network. This brightly hued peacock, which NBC called the bird, was adopted due to the increase in color programming. The Federal Aid Highway Act, which created the interstate highway system, was signed by President Dwight D. Eisenhower on June 29th. This authorized the construction of over 41,000 miles of highways across the United States. It was the largest public construction project to be undertaken by the government and was estimated to cost between 25 and 30 billion dollars to build. Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin ended their very popular partnership on July 25th. After 10 years together as a duo, the pair had made 16 profitable movies, hosted a very successful TV show, and were the number one nightclub act in America. But at the Copacabana nightclub in New York City, they performed for the final time together. On August 11th, abstract expressionist painter Jackson Pollock died in a car accident in Springs, New York. After struggling with alcoholism for his entire adult life, Pollock crashed his Oldsmobile convertible while driving under the influence of alcohol. The crash occurred less than a mile from his home and also killed one passenger riding in the car with Pollock. On September 14th, IBM introduced the Ramac 305, the first commercial computer with a 5 megabyte hard drive that used a magnetic disk storage. The new computer introduced the concept of instantly accessible information. Before RAMAC, information had to be entered by running a stack of cards through a punched card machine, and answers would arrive in hours or even days. RAMAC could find data in seconds, alter it, and move on to find a completely different piece of data. The size of this computer was comparable to two kitchen refrigerators side by side, and it weighed over a ton. The epic film by Cecil B. DeMille, The Ten Commandments, starring Charlton Heston as Moses, released on October 5th. It has remained in the top 10 of the worldwide list of highest grossing films of all time, after being adjusted for inflation. 
On October 16th, a Pan Am flight from Honolulu, Hawaii to San Francisco made a crash landing in the Pacific Ocean. Pan Am Flight 6 lost two engines, which forced the pilot to try a water landing. All 31 people on board survived due to the calm and confidence of Captain Richard Ogden, who spoke to the passengers, saying, Ladies and gentlemen, the water temperature is 74 degrees, and the waves are only a matter of inches high. There is absolutely nothing to worry about. Things couldn't be better for us. The Game of the Century was held on October 17th. This chess match featured a 13-year-old Bobby Fischer defeating the 1953 U.S. chess champion Donald Byrne in the Rosenwald Memorial Tournament at the Marshall Chess Club in New York City. On November 6th, Dwight D. Eisenhower was re-elected President of the United States. He defeated Democrat candidate Adelaide Stevenson to win a second term. November 17th brought us the talent of Syracuse University fullback Jim Brown. On this date, Brown scored 43 record-breaking points from six touchdowns and seven extra points kicked versus Colgate University. As a senior, he was a contender for the Heisman Trophy and set many school records that year. Led by future Basketball Hall of Famers Bill Russell and Casey Jones, the United States won its fourth consecutive Olympic gold medal on December 1st. The 89-55 victory over the Soviet Union was at the Summer Olympic Games held in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. On December 4, 1956, at Sun Records in Memphis, Tennessee, what became known as the Million Dollar Quartet happened as an impromptu jam session between Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, and Johnny Cash. The musical stars seem to have aligned on that day by pure chance, and the recording session remains a landmark event in the history of rock and roll.